Cody. Hiya, Egbert. So, you want to hear a yoke? Well, uh, I don't have a whole lot of time. Don't worry. It'll be over easy. Okay, then, uh, but you better get cracking. Have you been feeling blue lately? Mm, I guess a little. Hey, don't worry. Sooner or later, you'll come out of your shell. Happy Easter. Easter? I don't even know her. Oh, my... You know what? I'm sorry. But this sucks. This is horrible. It's the worst thing I have ever seen. What are, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. We can punch it up. No, yeah. no, no, no. There's no. You know what? Why are we even trying to make Easter a funny holiday? Eggs are not funny. I, I hereby declare that this Talk Soup Weekend show will be completely Easter reference free. Enjoy. <laughs> But I think he wears these when he visits his girlfriend. A bunch of perverted punks. Watching the Talk Soup non-Easter special. No bunnies, no colored eggs, no jelly beans, and none of that cheesy green basket filler. Just pure non-Eastery fun. Hi, I'm John Henson. You know that filler causes cancer. Does? Yeah, that's that's what I've read. Anyway. All right. Big announcement to make. I have finally made it. My dream has come true. We received a mention on one of my favorite shows, Mystery Science Theater 3000. That's right. It came on the Robots Choice Oscar show. Let's go to the videotape. Uh, Carol the waitress, Simon the... Oh, why did they bleep out former guy from Talk Soup? Hello? Holy God, who did that to you? John Hansen. Oh, that's not true. Mystery Science Theater 3000 can be seen on the Sci-Fi Channel, while Greg Kinnear can be seen hosting Saturday Night Live this weekend. So make sure to watch that. I can, uh, can be seen in the upcoming ABC After School special, Inhalance, the silent killer, co-starring Joanna Kearns. Yeah. Coming up on the big non-Easter extravaganza, vomiting on the high seas, Learn about your personality by eating ice cream. Plus, uh-oh, somebody's been a naughty hermaphrodite. Oh, she took her punishment like a man, but she cried just like a little girl. First up, when he wears clothes, Freddy's a flashy dresser. This tends to irritate his daughter Kathleen, which tends to concern Sally Jesse Raphael, the patron saint of irritated family members everywhere. In the following highlight, Freddie struts his stuff backstage while Kathleen makes light of his outrageous attire. People are laughing at him and saying, you know, people that he went to school with, I mean, grade school, they're walking around like this. And I mean, they wear their, their normal 60-year-old, you know, look. And he walks around like, hey, you know, like he's doing right now, you know. And I, I just, I mean, I'm like, you know, dad, at least, you know, change up a little bit. Act 65 a little bit with attire. What have you got? Well, Sally, I have a... Big bag of goodies here, okay? Where shall I begin? Anywhere you want. So we'll start with the um, ho holes, and I think he wears these when he visits his girlfriend. <laughs> in case the audience is wondering, it says ho ho on his underpants, oh. and that's why they're called ho hos. And it's ho ho. And, um,. On a nice summer or winter jog, he has his biking shorts. Biking yeah, shorts. Yeah, yeah. Does he bike? Yes, he bikes. Mm -hmm. All right. Then when he wants to go out for a night on the town or a uh, or a dinner, uh, you date, robbed his closet. To I come sure visit. did. Oh no! I sure did. No. He wears his Hawaiian hula <laughs> with a hat. Oh, that's a nice look right there. <laughs> yeah. Freddie is 64 years old. And says his body is like a car. You change the oil, fine-tune it, and it's going to run a long time. To stay young, Freddie says he doesn't eat much food. Instead, he relies on supplements like SlimFast with herbs and vitamins. 
He also enjoys uh, various sports like jogging and bike riding. All right, you know what? That's enough, Freddie. Freddie, cut it out. Just cut it out. That's enough. Thank you. Monday on Sally, kids will rail on their parents for having affairs. They think mom and dad should try having sex with each other instead of everybody else. It's a bit unconventional, but it just might work. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Well, Johnny. actress Caressa Savage loves big entrances. And since she's a porn star, that probably comes in handy. In this Jerry highlight, we're going to see Caressa flounce around in a skin-tight rain slicker, which also comes in handy in her line of work. Take it away, Miss Thang. Please welcome Caressa to the show. I'm not sure it matters, matters what I ask. <laughs> well, what do you think about the situation in Bosnia? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> all right, you are what? A, you're, you, you're a porn star. And, I guess you could say that. And you don't Adult want... Adult slut. Ooh. <laughs> hey, you know, she looks just like the new Horton Salt Girl. You remember their slogan? When it rains, she scores. Yeah, I think it's the rain slicker that does it. We're not doing an Easter show here, Tom. Monday on Jerry, it was a trip to the moon on gossamer wings. But the next morning, he left and never called. Why? Oh, why? Monday, guests confront their one-night stands and clear up all the confusion. Who's your favorite wrestler? Hulk Hogan? Randy Savage? Steve Buscemi? What? That's right. Steve Buscemi, the actor. The scrawny little one. It's Troll! troll. Steve was on his high school wrestling team, so I'm sure they won a lot of meets. <laughs> Here he is now on Late Night with Conan O'Brien demonstrating the hold he calls the reverse cradle. <laughs> All right, Andy, you have to get behind me. All right. <laughs> now it's done. This is, this is the ready oh. position. And you got to do it. Can you put your other leg up, though? Oh, the other. Uh, wait, wait, like You know, this? anybody no, 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 tuning no, no, in right now side. is really <laughs> afraid right. and no, confused. No, you were right, actually. Right, 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 right. All right. Okay. okay. And then you would, you would grab right. your guy like this. Okay. Right. But I need this leg. Well. <laughs> all right, there. Wait, you have to act? <laughs> you mean that's the first? I'm I'm too big. You're the first guy that the reverse cradle didn't work on. <laughs> I'm a, we're on not exactly the same weight class. No. Okay, we have two here for you. Later, Andy gave Steve a wedgie and stole his lunch money, or later, Andy and Steve shared a romantic dinner and a carriage ride through Central Park. I really hope one of those worked. Monday on Late Night, Conan cleans the place up and rolls out the red carpet for Jerry Springer. Jerry will talk about his rating surge and upcoming movie debut. You can tell a lot about a person merely by inspecting his or her penmanship. That's what handwriting analyst Bart Baggett says. A simple signature can reveal volumes about your personality, especially if your name is Bart Baggett. Here's Baggett now analyzing some handwriting on The Lisa Show. Now, this is uh, Ted Bundy, who was a mass murderer up in, up in uh, Oregon, I think. And notice he's got one trait right here called resentment. And this hard upstroke, anytime you see this, is someone that's angry all the time. And you may find people that are just angry at the world for no reason. But when you combine this with a lot of the other traits that you have in murderer's handwriting, you get somebody who's really bad. So if you see that trait, run, don't walk to the nearest exit. That's my advice. <laughs> but now, wait a minute. I, I, come on. Really? Handwriting is brain writing. And although we're talking about mass murders, most people in the audience and watching at home are going to be worried about, is he going to break my heart? Is he going to lie to me? Is he going to be too sensitive? Does he start arguments all the time? 
And these personality traits are what's so essential to get it just for compatibility. My whole thrust was self-improvement. So how can you look at your own handwriting, figure out what you can improve and what you can change? The same thing with the Gainesville Ripper. He had telltale. He, he had something called the line loop, and I'll show it to you. Now, this is a Danny Roland. Now, he's got some real funky, anytime you see really funky handwriting, you know there may be a problem. But look right here in this letter O. See, there's two loops there. That is what we call a lying loop. If there's two loops in letter O, and I think the next scene shows it in more detail. A lying loop. Maybe someone will shade the truth a little bit. And you'll see oh, this in even is. some salespeople's handwriting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Johnson isn't in right now. And that's pathological lying. Let's follow Bart Baggett's lead and analyze the handwriting of our director, Fred Mendez. Note the curly Q at the top of the capital D. This flair indicates a pronounced anal aggressive streak. The downsloping N indicates that Fred is a bit disorganized, and the fact that it's written in blood is suggestive of intense mood swings. That's what our man Baggett says. Monday, Lisa discusses the horror of finding out someone has given you an STD. Not to be confused with STP, a high-viscosity motor oil. <laughs> Coming up on today's All-You-Can-Eat edition of Talk Soup, a mighty hermaphrodite locks horns with a transsexual in the dysfunctional duel of the century. Plus, Richard Simmons performs a raid on a junk food junkie's refrigerator. But first, egg blowing made simple and hilarious. Go ahead. Watch. I am cholesterol boy. He was. If you're looking for the big talk soup Easter special, keep looking. I'm John Henson. Every day I sit in this chair watching the clips and I wonder what are those ladies on the view really like? I mean, after all, there's certainly been enough rumors and wild stories. I should know. I started them. But recently, Debbie and Joy decided to set the record straight and clear up any misconceptions about what they're really like. Well, Your turn, Debbie. I thought about this, and I thought, you know, just about everything. You wouldn't know anything about me by looking at me at all, and I'm starting to realize it more and more the more I read about myself mm. in the papers and in magazines. And I go, these people have no clue who I am. They think you can't be blonde and have a brain. I learned a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Storm. Go ahead, Zwa. Well, actually, um, I'm a man. I've <laughs> <laughs> um, not been as kissing up to Debbie yet. <laughs> no, the truth about me is that I happen to have perfectly formed toes, which I will share with the audience. We, oh, oh, look at these toes. Oh, beautiful toes. Beautiful oh. feet. This camera here. Mm -hmm. Get a load of those toes, baby. She is Perfectly beautiful. graduated. Oh not the second toe is not longer <laughs> than the first toe. Excellent arch. That's my best feature. Thank you. And now, an ode to joy. Behar's feet. Oh, joy, my sweet, I love your feet and all your little toes. When I see them, I get tingly and want to shed my clothes. I love your calves. I love your heels. I love the way your toenail feels. I'd even give a hundred bucks to lick and suck your arch deluxe. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Tuesday on The View, the gals welcome actress Michelle Pfeiffer. She's working on some new flick now, and I understand she has a nice pedicure. Before we check in with the home and family gang, let the record show this is not an Easter-related highlight. They happen to be dying eggs, but that doesn't mean a thing. They're always doing stuff like that, especially when Candace Garvey's around. She loves her arts and crafts. Okay, let the non-Eastery fun commence. Did you break the egg? Blow it. Do you want to I don't like to these? blow raw eggs. <laughs> then it won't work. Okay. Oh. If you're going to do the glitter eggs, you're going to use craft glue Go. from your local craft Come store, on. or and you're going to use Just glitter powder that you can find both at Just a craft store inhale. or Go. at an art store. Just blow, Christina. <laughs> Come on. Then you read page you know 27. Do that, you? Put Christina. your lips together and blow. Go for it. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Ooh, a little snort there at the end. Well, nice try, Christina. Now it's Mike's turn. Go ahead, Mikey. Go ahead. Watch. 
I am cholesterol boy. <laughs> and look, now, that is I've never seen you don't show. wanna, you can always do this. There you go. Do you want to do a scramble? <laughs> Welcome to the IHOP. No. That would be funny. What the I told you eggs aren't funny. I said right at the top of the show, eggs aren't funny. They're not funny. Nobody listens to me. Tuesday on Home and Family, Candace Garvey shows viewers how to decorate their homes without breaking the bank. Tips include making curtains out of crepe paper and an entertainment center out of old milk cartons. Yeah, like Steve Garvey would put up with any of that crap in his home. <laughs> Hang tight, soup heads. The fun's just begun, and there's plenty more to come. A little later, I'll be reading some viewer mail. Yeah, I can read. Plus, a race driver suppresses a need to pee. But first, the dangers of showering with Dana Delaney. Excuse me. I puked into the drain of the shower. My poor boyfriend is inching away from me as far as possible. He dressed rock star. Welcome back to Talk Soup. I am not Peter Cottontail. In my favorite Dana Delaney fantasy, she's shaving her armpits while projectile vomiting. So imagine my delight upon screening this Tonight Show highlight. Here's Dana telling Jay about a rather violent yet erotic encounter with seasickness. So I wore these, they had these wristbands, you know, they're supposed to help you with your pressure point. I took ginger, all this stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Is that what yeah, the, 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 the ward off seasickness? Yeah, yeah. To agree. So the second day, I'm in the shower with my boyfriend, which they ask you to do. To save water? To save water. Of course. On the boat. Mm -hmm. And the shower, the shower is about as big as this chair. This is it, right? And I'm in the shower and I'm, Shaving my armpits, one arm, uh, as you can tell, I'm not yeah, French. French right. <laughs> so I'm shaving one armpit. I got one up and I go, <clears throat> excuse me, I puked into the drain of the shower. My poor boyfriend is inching away from me as far as possible. I finished, I like this, finished, went into the other armpit. <laughs> Even, no, right? no, of course. I, I, I just think any fantasy I had going here, pretty much. <laughs> you know, well, Dana should have known better than to take a trip on one of those discount cruise lines. Yes, Spew Cruises presents a seven-day, seven-night extravaganza on the SS Hurl. Join your host, Captain Ralph, as you vomit over 21 gourmet dinners and seven glorious days and nights. It's fun, fun, fun. Remember, you're not leaving till you're heaving with Spew Cruises and the SS Hurl. Your vacation's in the bag. <laughs> Call 1-800-WANT-PUKE now. <laughs> Interesting use of the umlaut there in that 1-800 number. Tuesday on The Tonight Show, an interview with NYPD Blue Star, Dennis Franz. He'll talk about shouting obscenities and bearing his butt on the popular series. Two things any proud thespian would be glad to do for their art. This week, Richard Simmons spoke with women who were having a tough time controlling their weight. Since the Spice Girls were busy, he decided to focus on Beverly and her daughter Brianna instead. Here he is, watching them junk food shop till they drop on Lisa. Have a nice day. I gotta go see my friend Beverly and her daughter Brianna. Domino's Pizza! Hi. How are you doing, Beverly? How are you? Are you happy at your way? No. 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 Are you happy at your way? No. Here's a scale. <sighs> When's the last time you ate yourself? Not two months ago. Yeah? And what did it say? I was at 235. Okay. You all are sitting across from each other. Right. But actually, it is a reflection, isn't it? Because she is starting to reflect everything that you are and what you do. As you can see, I try to do the right thing. But I just can't help myself. So do you think the food groups are cookies, <laughs> potato chips, Malamars? Okay. We have to work on this eating thing. Hey, I've got a better idea. If you really want to lose weight and don't like to diet, may I suggest... 
Yes, Spew Cruises presents a seven-day, seven-night extravaganza on the SS Hurl. Join your host, Captain Ralph, as you vomit over 21 gourmet dinners and seven glorious days and nights. It's fun, fun, fun. Remember, you're not leaving till you're heaving with Spew Cruises and the SS Hurl. Your vacation's in the bag. Call 1-800-WANT-PUKE now. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeps getting better, doesn't it? Every single one. Wednesday, Lisa speaks with people who were tortured by the tax man. They say the IRS unjustly audited them and made them a, a bad thing. Yeah, yeah bad. Shoot! Coming up later on Talk Soup, we'll be flaunting our clip of the week. Damn! Plus, learn about your true self by eating lots and lots of ice cream. But first, why you should never date a bunko artist. God, I so nice. What did he do to you? All right, he took your money. He took my money, he took my furniture, and I have his uh, name tattooed on my chest. In Hollywood, the biggest... Time now for the Talk Soup Quote of the Week! Woo! This week's quote comes to us from The View. Here's Debbie Snuffleupagus remembering the good old days. I was, I was an egg hanging out in my mom's uterus. Oh, yeah, sure. And even though that was an egg reference, it had nothing to do with Easter. Forging ahead. Dana Gould is a stand-up comic with a wry sense of humor, which is a polite way of saying he's a real smart ass. No wonder Conan's a fan. So are we. I'm sure you will be, too, after watching this clip from Late Night. Here's Mr. Wiseacre now discussing the common denominator of small-town America. The little things crack me up. Like, I think every town gets more and more similar now with the advent of these big chains, coffee stores, and whatever. But the thing that really makes me laugh is that every town, no matter how small of a town, no matter where you are in America, every town has a porno shop. Mm -hmm. Every single town, no matter how small it is, they have the mailbox. The, you know, the... <laughs> we know about the mailbox, yeah. It's probably near the porno right, shop. That's yeah. right. But they all have that little store in the corner, open 24 hours, marital aids, adult novelties. And the 24-hour thing is just the thing that kills me. Where did that come into play? You know? mm -hmm. Hey, boss, when do we close? Never! <laughs> this is Wisconsin, damn it. People need joy jelly. <laughs> On a Thursday in March, we are here to meet your porno needs. <laughs> it's what's made America great. It's, a, it's nice to live in a country that has its priorities in order. The library's open two hours a week, and the porno shop's 24 7. So, you know. <laughs> a tale of two cities, you want to wait. Happy beads, come right in. <laughs> in response to Dana's comments, some small town porn shops and libraries are joining forces. Here are a few of the titles they'll be featuring there's 1980 Fornicate. The sun also rises in my pants, Little Nude Women, Donkey Ho Dog, Red Butt of Courage, and my favorite, Moby Dick. That's, that's a classic right there. <laughs> Wednesday on Late Night, William Shatner will command the guest chair. He's starring as himself in the new film, Free Enterprise. Linda should have known better. Her best friend had been taken in by a con man who broke her heart and left her penniless. But when Cupid required a leap of faith, she closed her eyes and screamed bonsai. Unfortunately, the man on the receiving end of all this unbridled affection turned out to be the same creep who ripped off her friend. Here's Linda sharing the whole sordid tale with our friend Sally. He told me he paid rent, so I'm giving him 500 bucks plus for utilities, food, and all that other stuff. Well, it turned out he's the manager of this apartment building. He didn't have to pay a dime. He wasn't paying a dime. All right. What I, how I found, listen to this, how I found out was um, my friend, um, went through the same thing with him and we didn't know it was the same guy what yeah and we didn't know it was the same explain guy explain that to me linda my friend would be telling me about this guy she met she moved in with him and she ended up leaving because he got a restraining order on her took all her furniture she had his kid and he denied it was his she told you all this about this man and i didn't know it was this you guy then read the call the want ads the personal ads and you do the same thing as your friend i end up with the, the same, same guy man. without knowing without even knowing this was the same guy what did he do to you all right he took your money he took my money he took my furniture and i have his uh 
name tattooed on my chest. Yeah, that's a class move because a tattoo on the butt just isn't as romantic. In a related note, tattoos last forever. Oh. Wednesday on Sally, shocking secrets will be exposed. How shocking, you ask? Really shocking. Very, very shocking stuff. Secrets so shameful they will threaten the well-being of this great republic we call America. Okay, maybe I overdid it a little. But they're still shocking. They're still shocking. Okay. Jeff Gordon is a race car driver who's won 29 Winston Cup NASCAR competitions. And he's never once had to stop to take a leak. <laughs> That's right. He's got bladder control to burn. I'm telling you, the guy's a camel. He could drink a keg and not pee for a week. Here he is on Later telling Sidney Crawford all about his amazing self-control. Kind of a crude question, but like, how does one pee? <laughs> uh, well, you learn how to hold it. <laughs> yeah, I, we've had a race, I think, actually this year is about four and a half hours long. And, you know, you're trying to drink fluids fairly early before the race because, you know, you, you, won't, you don't want to get dehydrated. Uh, and then you're drinking during the race, and then all of a sudden you, you have this race that just goes on and on and on forever. And it, it has gotten very close, very, very close. But uh, you're not going to uh, blow the no, race no over, way, right? No way. Uh, uh, you know, you just learn how to how to deal with it. And I think what it is when you're driving a race car at that speed and around cars inches away from you, you don't even think about it. All you're thinking about is winning the race or passing the next right. car, or not getting past. And so you totally forget about it. And then when the race is over, you're like <laughs> straight to the bathroom. <laughs> Apparently, Jeff doesn't have as much control as he thinks. I don't know if you saw his car in the winner's circle of his last race. Whoa! Wow, I hope he's okay. <laughs> Tuesday on Later, the fill-in host will be supermodel Veronica Webb. She'll be interviewing rapper-turned movie mogul Ice Cube. He's got a new flick out called Players Club. Still to come on Talk Soup, I'm going to open up some viewer mail. Actually, it's Talk Soup mail. Opening a viewer's mail would be a felony. Plus, evil toy makers will exploit children for financial gain. But first, no wife of mine's gonna dance naked, no siree. I'm not gonna carry around my last name if she wants to get up naked and dance in front of a bunch of perverts. Dancers, most 90% of the dance. Right, guys, would you let your girlfriend dance around naked in front of a bunch of perverted punks? Tonight, eat. Welcome back to the Anti-Holiday Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm John Henson. Hey, how's this for a double standard? Jamie wants his wife, Tracy, to quit stripping, even though he himself works as a DJ in a topless bar. He thinks that nudie bars are filled with degenerates, even though that's where he met Tracy. Tracy says she makes too many C-notes to hang up the G-string for good. Sounds like a dilemma tailor-made for Jerry Springer. She's saying that, she's saying that uh, she wants to be a topless dancer. What do you want to say to her? She's not going to do it as long as she's married to me. She's not going to carry around my last name if she wants to get up naked and dance in front of a bunch of perverts. Dancers, most 90% of the dance... Right, guys, would you let your girlfriend dance around naked in front of a bunch of perverted punks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You wait till you're in these shoes, and then you won't be saying that. Do you, you work... You met me you... that way, though. You met me as a dancer. That's when, that's when we met. That's when we were going out. That's when we were going out. We're married now. There's a big difference. Don't you work there? I'm a disc jockey. I don't take my clothes off. And he watches it. He gets to watch it. I don't watch it. I read a book the whole freaking time. I read. I sit up there. I, I spend the music. A <laughs> uh, book or a magazine? Actually, it's a magazine, Jerry. In fact, we've got a list of the periodicals Jamie likes to read. There's Nude Week, VD Guide, National Pornographic, and, of course, People Magazine. Yeah, kind of the same joke as the book titles, but give us a break. Thursday, Jerry Springer updates the stories on some out-of-control teens. Is 15-year-old Nick still dating older men? <laughs> Will Sabrina marry your teenage boyfriend? Tune in and find out. I got the rhythm in me. I'm your private dancer. <laughs> You're a dancer for money. I'll do what you want me to do. Okay. Oh. Conan O'Brien's got pictures of all kinds of celebrities hanging on the walls of his production offices, but no John Goodman. 
The Roseanne star was the first ever guest on Late Night and has been on the show hundreds, nay, thousands of times, yet he keeps getting the whiff. How come? No, you're here somewhere. I mean, what's yeah, the problem? Okay, well, let's look right here. Okay. I can understand this. Yeah, that's, uh, Sylvester of course, Stallone. Sylvester Great Stallone. Actor. And he's, big, a, he's a big star, big so you can star. see that's why right. Yeah, I know why he'd be here, and right here, of course. Uh, David Letterman. David Letterman. He came on the first season, and you could see, I mean, he had the show first. Yeah, and it's only he was here in the studio for a long Those time. Those are big stars. That's you right. put, they're like international. You put them up. And here was... Well, Norm McDonald. Norm McDonald. Yeah. Norm's up there. Well, he's a really funny guy, and then yeah, right. I felt bad. You know, he lost his job, yeah, and so I'm, you know, and uh... Screech from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> well, yeah, and, I mean, Saved by the Bell has a, has a big teen following, and he stayed with the show. Everyone else left, and he came on, and I thought, Screech, you gotta have him there, and then Chuck Woolery. Chuck Woolery. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck Woolery, that's how I met my girlfriend. And and he's great. I mean, he's 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 genial and, and I don't see what the problem is. Screech again from Saved by the Bell. Uh, he's, he's a very talented man. Later, Conan relented and put up a portrait of Goodman. Oh, well, yeah. There he is. King Ralph on his throne. Whoa. Yeah. I have the same picture in my wallet. Thursday on Late Night, Conan jabbers away with actor Peter Gallagher. Gallagher will be starring in the upcoming TV miniseries, Brave New World. That feeling of hope I'm experiencing can mean one of only two things. Either I'm going to take charge of my life and really make a change, or it's time to read a little viewer mail. Hey, all right. I guess I'm stuck in my rut. This week's letter comes to us from Jessica Miller of Hickory Hills, Illinois. She writes, Dear John, do you plan on being arrested in the near future? If you did get arrested, what would it be for? Well, no, Jessica, I don't plan on getting arrested. But if I did, it sure wouldn't be for dropping trow in a men's room like George Michael. <laughs> that guy's bumming, huh? For more on the whole sordid tale, please watch E! Mysteries and Scandals, George Michael. Wake me up before you go through. Leave me hanging on the night of Jojo. He was one half of the most dynamic pop group the world had ever seen between 1985 and 1986. He had it all. Fame, fortune, facial hair. But he threw it all away one lonely afternoon in a Beverly Hills men's room. It was horrifying. He's very well endowed, and it's such a small room. Why did he do it? Perhaps no one could satisfy him as well as himself. I took one look at him and I said, you're going down, George. And, uh, I think he misunderstood me. Who could have seen it coming? Could Michael's music hold the key? Listen closely to the lyrics. Wake me up before you go-go. Don't leave me hanging on like a yo-yo. Or better yet, Sex is natural, sex is fun, sex is best when it's one on one. I'm a star, I'm a great big shining star. Say, you're not an undercover cop, are you? George Michael, hard rock, hard times, just hard. E, mysteries and scandals. Fame, I need a bitch. You drop a dollar in the photo booth and send us some pictures at Talk Soup E, P.O. Box 4897. Choo! <laughs> oh, Sangalese, California, Neener Double Out 48. Thrill with the magic of email at Talk Soup, the entertainment dot. Come <laughs> Oh, we, still oh, we suck so badly. It's just horrible how much we suck. Child labor laws. Who needs them? I think it's high time those lazy 12 and under layabouts switched off the Teletubbies and started to earn their keep. Oh, what's that? You're teething? No excuse. Put some Ambisol on those gums and get back on the assembly line. Yeah. Or at least queue up in front of a two-way mirror and spew design specs for your elders to copyright. With a report on the Lund Toy Company's new kiddiation program, here's Herb Weisbaum on CBS This Morning. 
To get that child's perspective, Lund is trying something new, something called kidiation. Market research experts gather a group of creative grade schoolers and have them brainstorm ideas. Today, the assignment is new dolls. And she can actually swim because her arms go like this. It brings children into the new product development process. Um, they can be in their playpen, playing with toys. Obviously, we were all children once, but uh, the further removed you are from it, the harder it is to remember what it's like to be a kid. It can walk, run. While the girls work, the Lund designers hang on every word. You see, they're behind that one-way mirror in a darkened room where they can see and hear everything. The toys, glitter, and funny hats help put them in the creative spirit. And they take part in all the fun, just like the girls. I am creative! I am creative! Yes, you are. And you know what else would be really creative? Losing the beanies, sending the kids back to school, and doing your own damn work. <laughs> Friday on CBS This Morning, Dolly Parton will be on to promote her new album, Treasures. And special correspondent Herb Weisbaum will try to make eye contact. You can learn a lot from a pint of Rocky Road. Just ask. You can learn a lot from a pint of Rocky You can learn a lot from a pint of Rocky Road. Just ask John Harrison. He's the official taste tester for Breyer's ice cream. He says the flavor of ice cream you like reveals who you are as a person. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You can learn a lot from a pint of Rocky Road. Just ask John Harrison. He's the official taste tester for Breyer's ice cream. He says the flavor of ice cream you like reveals who you are as a person. I'm not kidding. Harrison believes you can find your true self through ice cream. See, kids, Marlon Brando isn't obese. He's just on a spiritual journey. Mm. Up next, Harrison explains his sweet theories to Crook and Chase. What does this say about it? Look at the chart. Well, uh, let's start with, um, how about the double chocolate chunk then? Okay, right uh, there on the left. Exactly. Those are, uh, personality-wise, uh, more uh, creative, uh, charming. Also, a life of the party, a uh, center of attention. Oh, that's yeah. me. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm vanilla. I said vanilla. He said vanilla. You did, and of yeah. course, uh, those are, uh, well, we've always thought of them as being uh, boring and ho-hum. Uh -huh. Dr. Hirsch found out that, in fact, they're colorful, impulsive, risk-takers, Charlie. Thank you, Dr. Hirsch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, one's yours, which one's yours, William? Uh, mine's butter pecan. Uh, let's go right to it then. And here we go. Yes. A perfectionist, uh, of course, a uh, very uh, careful uh, individual, <laughs> but also a take charge uh, personality. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Later, John showed everybody the proper way to taste ice cream. Now, this is how you do it. You take a small amount right off the top because that is the warmest. Like a gold, use a gold spoon. I do, Charlie. Time. Well, you sure, sure. You got to uh, have a little class. Small here, amount you know. right off the top. Right off the top. And then you invert the spoon because you want that warm part to cover the taste buds first. Mm -hmm. You invert the spoon. That's correct. Just like that. All right. And Are then you, you, you swirl it. Okay. Everybody? Swirl. Okay, let's Take do some. It. One, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aerate it now by smacking the lips. That's right. <laughs> oh, man, I thought Bart Baggett had a bogus job. Tuesday on Crook and Chase, author Barbara Sykes will explain how to overcome doubt, fear, and procrastination. Aptly enough, her book is titled Overcoming Doubt, Fear, and Procrastination. Coming up after the break, it's our clip of the week. In just a moment, a hermaphrodite gets humiliated. She's been a bad little girl and a bad little boy. Get on your knees right now. Get over here. Put your head down. Carrots are rich in vitamin E and widely believed to be good for eyesight. I'm John Henson, and welcome back to our anti-holiday edition of Talk Soup. No Easter stuff today, Tom. Really? No, not us. We're all about sucking this week. Nothing really? about Easter. Just trying to put together as poor a show as we possibly can. We're doing a good job. I think we're pretty darn close. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give yourselves a round of applause. This show sucks. That's right. <laughs> hey, how often do we get to see a hermaphrodite and a drag queen tussle on camera, huh? Two or three times a month, max, right? Go to the flow chart. Check it out, Tom. Look into it. We're about to meet Krista and Jewel. Not to be confused with a folk singer, this jewel leaves the seat up. 
<laughs> if you know what I mean, and I think you do, get rid of that drum roll. I'm not ready yet. As you can imagine, this little gem comes to us from the Jerry Springer Show. Bring back that drum roll now. Ladies and gents, pre-ops and post-ops, presenting our Talk Soup Clip of the Week. Now you have a lover. That's right. And your lover is your master, your mistress? My mistress. My lover which, is my mistress, and I love her Which very means, much. and you're the slave, which means this is a relationship where she bosses you around? Yes, that's correct. That she bosses me around. She's How long have you been with this master? Uh, mistress, I've been mistress. with her about 18 months. 18 months. Yes, and it's been a very beautiful relationship, and she accepts me for who I am. All right, let's meet this competitor, this ex, this ex of your current mistress who keeps interfering in your relationship, or, as you say. Uh, is it a him or a her? It's, it's Krista. Here's Krista. Lord have mercy. It's time for someone to restore order to these proceedings. Mistress Shock, do your stuff. You attacked her? She broke you my nail. You were going to go after me. I did not. Did you hit her first? Yes, yeah. twice in the face. Get place. over here. You get over there and you get over here. Get on your knees right now. Get over here. Put your head down. <laughs> It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Put the lotion in the basket! <laughs> Friday on Jerry, lovers face off against mistresses in another salacious showdown. Lay your wagers down, Friday. Well, that's it for this edition of Talk Soup. Just a reminder to tune into our daily show every weeknight at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. We'll have a fresh half hour of highlights for you. Thanks for watching, and uh, by the way, Happy Easter. So long, everybody. Now it's time for our e Easter Bunny to deliver his Easter bags. Come on out. No, I look stupid. Come on, you look adorable. Come on up here. Oh. I hate this. Oh, well, that's what's known as a contractual obligation. Oh, shut up. Come on, it's our Easter show. Put it on. It'll be fun. It seems like it's going to be stupid. No, it'll be really, really fun, I promise. Has Greg ever worn this? You bet he has. You're lying to me. No, I'm not. This well, is yeah, stupid. Here comes Parent Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity, Easter's on its way. Excuse me, it's, uh, it's an egg from an Easter sock. I hate eggs. They called him 